The new Balance Rebel version 4 is rumoured to be one of the best daily shoes of 2024. In my testing, there have been some amazing highs and really falling in love with the shoe, but also some real lows. So that's what this video is all about. My roller coaster ride with the New Balance Rebel version 4. So the purposes of a shoe like the New Balance Rebel version 4 is just a classic everyday shoe to do all sorts of different types of runs in pretty well. This shoe set me back 140. 40 pounds, around about 160 euros or 140 US dollars. And of course, like everything on the channel, I bought this shoe 100% with my money. So I give you that completely impartial, honest review. In terms of stack heights, you've got a 30 mil stack at the back, 24 at the front, giving that six millimeter overall drop in the shoe. For me, this came in as a super lightweight, 248 grams. I rarely run in a shoe under 250 grams and I really noticed that lovely lightweight feel. It's a neutral shoe and it has a lovely engine mesh phantom fit upper. The midsole of this shoe is New Balance's all new PIVA and EVA blend and there is no carbon plate in the shoe at all. In terms of the outsole you've got five rubber strips on the outsole giving a really good amount of grip and durability to the shoe. Are there different widths available? Well at the moment it depends where you live. If you live in the USA get it on the New Balance website then yes you've got the standard width and the extra wide one. In the UK we've only got standard at the moment. And then finally this was true to size for me in my standard UK size 12. Right, let's have a chat about the differences. The first one is this new midsole, the Piba and EVA blended midsole. It's about a three millimeter gain in stack height and also significantly lighter as well. About, around about 10 grams lighter, depending on what size shoe you have. There's also been a slight price increase in the shoe, kind of to be expected in the world we live in, and a slight increase in the width. A lot of room in the front of the shoe. We'll come on to that later on in the review. Right, but let's get stuck in to my likes. Now my first like, I've just written lightweight and fun because that's what this shoe is. It really puts a smile on your face as you run along. But despite being lightweight, they've also added this extra width in the shoe. Wider footed runners rejoice and you've got a really good amount of volume up there for all sorts of different foot sizes. You've got a really good amount of cushioning, but also it's a really responsive ride as well. You can really pick up the pace if you're going to be doing some speed workouts some races the turn of speed in the shoe is really great considering it doesn't have a carbon plate in it it's also with that extra width it's super stable at all speeds as well especially going around the corners it's just an all-around really good fun shoe to run in. it puts a smile on your face and wants you to run a little bit more and a little bit faster as well the real highlight of this shoe is this new midsole that Piba and EVA blend basically Piba foam is that lightweight racing super responsive super snappy the EVA part of that foam is to get you that extra bit of durability so not quite as responsive but it's gonna last a long time that's that really good balance which we want in a daily shoe my second like with the shoe is it's so versatile or whatever type of running you want to throw at it it's really happy at easy paces tempo pace threshold pace marathon pace whatever you want to be doing your training at this shoe will handle it really well with this durable outsole here you could even do some light trails some fire roads and things like that it will handle that absolutely fine. The upper of this shoe, New Balance's Phantom Fit Upper, really breathable, get a good amount of airflow through there as well. And I wouldn't hesitate to use this for all different types of races as well, 5K, 10K, half marathon, even up to a marathon distance with the amount of cushioning you're getting from this midsole. So yeah, true versatility, which is really what we wanna see in a classic daily trainer. My final like is that price and that value that you're getting from this shoe. I managed to get these for just 118 pounds, I think it was, with a discount code off sports shoes. Really fantastic value for that sort of price point. So far, durability wise, holding up really well. We've done about 30 miles, about 50K in the shoe, and there is absolutely no wear on this whatsoever. It makes you feel good when you're running and also in your back pocket as well. I honestly can't think of a better value shoe if you can get a little bit of a discount like I did for around about 120 pounds out there on the market at the moment. But like everything in life, it wasn't all smiles. There were quite a lot of them, but there were some dislikes with this shoe as well. The first one being, I did experience some really bad rubbing at the back of the shoe, on the back of my ankle, on the Achilles area, real sort of bad chafing. And I had to cut short my first run in the shoe, which was really annoying because I was loving it so much. About 5K, absolutely fantastic. And then a K of like, something's not quite right here. And this is on both ankles as well. And the last 2K was just trying to limp back to the car as fast as I could. I put a little photo of what my ankle looked like after 8K of the first run in the shoe. And it was really, really quite sore. I had 
to have a rest day the next day because it was sore in all the other shoes I was then trying to walk around in. It was a really odd sensation. I didn't feel like anything was slipping, but I think all this comes down to is this shoe is particularly wide. My feet are a little bit on the narrow side. You've got a lot of space in here and I just couldn't really get it locked down very, very well. Now when I went out from the second testing run of this shoe, some people suggested in my Strava comments and on Instagram to try some heel lock lacing and that definitely improved things a little bit and I didn't suffer any sort of pain at the back of the shoe quite as much. But I really wanted to run and test this shoe properly so I did add some plasters or band-aids as Americans say to the back of my ankle and of course then it went away there was nothing to rub in. So I think that all this comes down to is if you have a particularly narrow foot you might suffer some bunching and some lockdown issues and just find it really hard to get a good lockdown in the shoe. With those little tweaks that heel lock lacing at the front and some plasters at the back of the shoe that obviously went away and then it really was all smiles at back again. And that really was the only negative to the shoe. Quite a big negative because no one wants to be cutting runs short, but overall I have absolutely loved putting those test miles in the shoe. Despite the pain, I really want to persevere through it because I think the shoe could be absolutely fantastic. On my Achilles, we'll just develop a little bit of callus and I'll get, I'll get on with it. But yeah, a lot of shoes these days, you don't even have to run them in. Back in the day, I've been running for so long. Every shoe you got out, it was a little bit uncomfortable that for that first sort of 20 miles so then it would, it would all soften up but shoes have come so good these days you don't really need to do that at all but with this one I think just my breaking period is just going to be a little bit longer so in conclusion is this going to my rotation am I keeping it is it going on eBay I definitely really want to keep it because it's been so much fun to run in the slight little issues at the back we'll get over that and I'm really looking forward to doing some long distance training runs for the marathons I've got coming up in this and it's going to be a good speed session shoe and a good marathon long run training shoe as well especially for anyone that doesn't want a carbon plate in the shoe. This really is one of the best options out there. But there are some other options as well. The classic shoe it's up against is something like the Nova Blast version 4. This is a little bit heavier, a little bit chunkier, not quite as fast and not quite as lightweight. So it depends the type of the feeling you want. You feel a little bit more in contact with the ground with this one. Lightweight, snappy. Whereas this one is just a good sort of chugging along shoe. Super, super comfortable. A lot more comfortable than this one that will look after you pretty well or potentially you can't justify I don't want to spend the amount of money that the Super Blast costs because it's a pretty expensive shoe at over 200 pounds then this shoe is really really good as well maybe not quite as snappy not quite as fast but a significant price drop from this you're going to be saving about 90 pounds in your back pocket with a shoe like this so very much it's staying in rotation definitely not going on eBay I really have enjoyed running and testing this shoe out let me know your thoughts down in the comments have you had some heel slip issues what did you think about the width but yeah very much recommended go out and check it out wherever you <laughs> buy your shoes from the next video coming up is all about my best ever comfy shoes this video is kind of blown up quite well so a lot of you guys must look for some comfort in your shoes so go and check that one out i'm off to get another run in the new balance rebel version 4 that's it guys keep on working hard keep on getting it done we'll see you very soon in the next one